Welcome into the run. I'm Anna Bellinghausen along with Tommy Frazier, Johnny Rogers. It's a bye week, but guys, we don't take any days off here at the Herd at Sports Bar. Hanging Say that. Out still. Say that again. We don't take any days off. I we think. don't. Oh, you take days off. Uh, Every day's Johnny game day. Johnny was out off. too. He was playing pool. Yeah, yeah. No, he was back then. You the one changed it up on us. That's true. I did say no recording on Monday, and I was like, guys, oh. you know, let's just enjoy our weekend, right? And let's let's talk on Thursday. Yeah, we figured you know, she was out having a wild weekend. Uh, yeah, that's what it, rumors are, I guess. Okay. Well, we think that every you were day at is whiskey game fest. Day. I heard. Yeah, I was there, but, but, but I, I, was, I, was, I was ready for work though. <laughs> you were ready to go. I was ready okay. for work. Hey, don't complain when I give you guys days off. It's never going to happen again. <laughs> well, uh, Nebraska now three and three off a win against Illinois, twenty to seven. Felt like could have been a little bit bigger of a win for Nebraska, but nonetheless, win is a win. I want your guys' hey reactions. Man, I, you know, I, I, people like that it didn't look good. Hey, a win is a win. Uh -huh. Right now, we'll take anything. 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 And, and, and what I like about the win was the defense was dominant and dominating the whole game. And so, But a win is a win. Whether they won by 14 or whether they won by 60 or whether they won by two, right now, a win is a win. Well, I could care about how we win, just as long as we win. Mm -hmm. I, I do think we need to beat the weak. I, I'm, I'm ready to beat a midget with a club. <laughs> so, Here we go again. Yeah, we go. <laughs> the little people, the little, the little people. The little, the little people. The little people. So whoever shows up gets it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just, you know, you have to send messages all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, different people, how, how you're coming along and what you're doing and dominating. And there's a whole lot that goes, goes with winning. You know, you have to win in a certain ma ma manner. But a win is a win. I want to talk about that defense, too, especially on the first drive and holding Illinois at right. the half-yard line, right? right? How did that set the tone for the game and maybe for the year defensively? Well, I think that changed the whole tone. I thought because Illinois went down and was driving down the field, and, and, once, and once you stop a team like that who's, who's have doubted in mind already – and you stopped them four times with the inside the one-yard line. I mean, you saw the energy level the whole team pick up, and then the offense goes down and put points on the board, and, and Illinois would never really recover from that. Well, it's just kind of funny to me that we dom so dominated against them, and we couldn't do nothing against Michigan. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of teams, a lot of teams, <laughs> I mean, Minnesota didn't do really? much against Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I said we all right against the weak yeah, teams, but we got we got to step it up. And then and, and that's the and it's all, and it's all part of our process to where, like you said, you dominate the teams you're supposed to, and and eventually you got to get the player, get the talent, and to dominate versus the team that you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And and I just felt this was a game that going, was a, was a telltale for Nebraska how the season was going to play out because this was one one of the games they had to win. It was one of the games they should have won, mm -hmm. and it was a winnable game mm -hmm. and. They came out and responded and got the W on, on the road at that. No, we've done what we were supposed to do and what everybody expected. Right. Yep. But at some point in time, we got to do the unexpected. We've got, we got to get past some hurdles, and I, I think we got some coming here. Uh, I can see a couple, two or three, two, a couple that I think we we're really supposed to get. But then after that, we're going to have to, we got to pep it up. We got to step up. I, I, like me, John, has always disagreed. Now, I, I see us with three wins right now, maybe four. You for know, the remaining of the, the schedule? For the remaining of the season. Mm -hmm. if, if the defense goes out and play the way they play yep. here, from here on out, I see I'm for sure three, maybe four wins. And, and my toss-up my, my toss win is Iowa at the end of the year because, you know, it's a rival game. And they're playing for the, 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 the trophy, so mm -hmm. that's to go either way. I don't think they can go on the road and beat Wisconsin. But everybody else, I think Nebraska has a better team than those, those other, other schools. Than Maryland? Maryland is a toss up, but you don't know how Maryland's going to play on the road most of the time. You know, they go out in Ohio State and start off strong and then didn't do anything in the second half. You know, so Maryland's kind of one of the games, like, to me, that's a hit and miss. But I'm, but I'm begging that they can beat Northwestern, they can beat Purdue, mm -hmm. they can beat Michigan State, and, and possibly beat Iowa. It's going to put this team in a lot harder position if they don't win both of these next games. I mean, looking at the remainder of the schedule, you got Northwestern, Purdue at home, which you got to protect home field, you gotta, right? You got to protect the home field. You have field. to win those. And then at Michigan State, again, coaching issues there. They're still looking for one. So that could be a win in East Lansing. But then, again, Maryland toss-up, like you guys say. At Wisconsin, I feel like you just cross that one off unless there's a miracle that happens. And then Iowa can still, like you said, Tommy, be a toss-up too. So, like, how important are these next two games? So, for me, they're very important because once you get these two wins, now you're one win away from your ultimate goal. You have, what, four games left mm -hmm. to win one. I think, I think they'll figure out how to win one game out of the last four if they, if they win the next two. Yeah. Well, like I said, every game is a statement. You know, we, we got to win every game. Um, 
<laughs> out here. I, I got to think that we can win every game, but we got to make sure, like I said, my whole goal is always to really get to that bowl game. Right. For our, for our players and for our fans and for our own confidence. Mm-hmm. So that, that means that we have to take the games, the next two games, uh, but you know, because those are the ones we're actually supposed, supposed to win. Right. <laughs> so those are gimmies, but they're not gimmies. It depends if they believe that they could do it. And, and, and that's the key there. They got to believe they can do it. And, and, and I think – for me, just watching them attitude, watching the mentality when that game, Illinois, you're playing against Illinois, you saw confidence. Yes. You saw this team play with more confidence in that more game. More free, too. And more free and having fun than any other game. Even the ones they won, you know, they didn't look like they were, having, they were playing freely. But look, for some reason, Illinois, you, something clicked to where that, the, both offense and defense, they were out there just flying around having fun. Well... <laughs> I like to think they're having fun, too, here. But like I said, this, just the week before, it wouldn't have someone's fun. I just don't know about the confidence level going back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, as we come down the toe, if we are, you know, you know how you feel sometimes you're getting better every week? Right. You know, and it doesn't make any difference who you're playing. You're getting better every week. Do you believe you're getting better every week? Because the other teams are getting better every week, too. Our problem is right now, our biggest challenge is that we've had so many injuries. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have so many people that we have to that we have to to make room for other people coming up that didn't think they were going to be in that position uh, here yet, and we still got still got a little bit of quarterback controversy. Yeah, and but I just think <clears throat> what what what's happening even with those injuries now you're starting to see some of the young guys that they that had high praises have to step it up. You know, like Malachi Coleman, mm-hmm. the freshman wide receiver from Lincoln. You know, one of the kids that was going back and forth and finally committed to Nebraska. And, you know, I was wondering how come he wasn't playing. But now he has no he has a choice but to get out there and play because, you know, you're four or five stars coming out of high school, you want to be out on the field. Right. You know, so I think what it's doing now is forcing those young guys to have to step their game up. Yeah. Well, I'm great with the skilled positions. I think they're very skillful. I'm really concerned about our offensive line and the defensive line. That's, that's, and I believe it's always what's up front that counts. No question. And uh, if we have a weakness, that's where our weakness lies. We're always talking about our receivers, our quarterbacks, the running backs. And, you know you know how you can tell if uh, if you got a really good line? Your running back is getting 100 yards every, every week. Which didn't happen. Right. That's when you know you really got mm-hmm. an offensive line. When those guys are getting ready to go to the, the, the senior bowl, you know, they're getting lined up and stuff. And we are not, func- we are not focusing on having concentration on those players. I watched a couple of them and I seen the, the difference in size between, say, Michigan's uh, offensive line and defensive mm-hmm. line and ours. It was a tremendous difference. And, 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 and for me, that, that, to me, that goes to having a coach who's been there a while. He, he started he started his, his process years ago. You know, they want to run him out of Michigan because he couldn't beat Ohio State. Now, they, they don't want to lose him. You know, so, but, but, but Nebraska, mm-hmm. is, for, for some reason, over the last many years, haven't really focused on offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. They, they want to be this old running, young, throwing offense, glamour guy. To I don't care mm-hmm. what kind of offense you run, you still got to have the guys up front right. that can, that can, that can, that can front run. Do you think it just takes a long time to develop those guys throughout the program? Like, you can't just go out and get those guys in the portals easily. Well, I, I don't know. I, well, it depends on coaching. I'm not saying that um, Dominic's not doing a good job coaching this year, but when you're when you, you have, when you playing with the same guys and – you're seeing some of the same results. Now it's time to go out and find the talent that you can put in, replace those guys. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just been going on for too long to where the running game at Nebraska hasn't been what it should be. Uh, I think it's all about recruiting. You got to recruit. You can see the long picture. Like I said, I'm not. It's nothing special about me to be able to see the, the quality and the size between our offensive linemen and defensive linemen and other teams. We have to get into recruiting and go out and cherry pick some guys that are going to make the grade. I mean, and we don't have them. We just don't have them. Like I said, we we do not have the caliber of linemen. We have good skill player right, position, right. but we haven't thought about the linemen evidently. I think it'll take a couple of years with Matt Rule recruiting to get to that point. I mean, again, going back to clearing the house, like he didn't really do that, right? He's working with right. guys that he didn't necessarily recruit, and it's probably hard to develop those guys quickly, and they also had some injuries on the offensive right. line. But, I mean, those are all excuses, right? You still need to have but a he, solid but O-line. He, but even if he would have cleared the house, he still would have had problems. You know, yeah. look at Colorado. They, I mean, that quarterback has been sacked probably the second most in the country. They, they have a hard time running the football, too. So, so the offensive line plays one of those deals to where those guys truly got to be a united front. Mm-hmm. They got to know 
how to play well together and how to gel together. And when you, and they also got to be in the same system for a while to understand what each person want to do. And Nebraska's had, what, four or five different offensive systems. Yeah, and they've been moved around, And, and been moved too. around and, and, and shuffled to where you can't really get a true identity when, you, when you, you're not having the same people, same starting five. Right. Uh, something that'll make Johnny happy, there was a forced fumble on special teams for Nebraska. So what about special teams making special plays finally? Well, I always say the special teams is the third of the game, but you, you don't hear, hear about it. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't see that there's a focus really on it. We're not thinking that way when it really makes a difference. Yeah. You know, that, that's where the big plays are made. That's where the, really the difference is made between uh, the two, and you can make up for some of these right. offensive defensive mm-hmm. linemen that we're actually talking about because, like I said, we can talk all we want, but when the, when the rubber hits the road you know, down mm-hmm. here, it's going to come down to the type of linemen that we have, right, not right. the type of skill position people. Mm-hmm. And if, they, if those people believe when they walk up there and that six six guy and hits you in your mouth, are <laughs> oh, you gonna mean, swing back? Yeah, <laughs> and you six three or six two. I mean, what, what are you gonna do? And uh, that's that's my concern coming down the road here. To yeah. building confidence, you have to really, really get to that belief part. Uh, part. And you know, being a little guy, I've, I've come up against big guys all the time. But when you think you're a big guy and then you get bigger guys, it's a different type of mentality. And I, and I think and I think the butt whooping by Michigan. Change the whole mindset of on, on defense side of the ball more so than offense side of the ball because they came out with a different attitude. You know, they weren't just going to sit there and get I mean, be pushed around. You know, the, the three guys up front did, did, did what they're supposed to do, made Occupy blocks, let the linebackers roam. So sometimes it takes getting hit in the mouth to understand what you truly do, what you, who you truly are. Mm-hmm. And now it's how you respond. As Mike Tyson used to always say, everybody, everybody's going to hit, you're going to hit somebody, but what happens when you get hit? How do you respond when you get hit? Yep. And I think Nebraska started. Versus Illinois, by coming back saying, "Man, we're not just gonna lay it down. We we got something here. We took a we took a, a butt whooping the week before, but we're not we're gonna do everything our part. Not let that happen again." And Matt Rule challenged his team after that Michigan loss. They literally did a full padded practice on Sunday. If that doesn't say, "Hey guys, if something needs to change," I don't know what would, right? So like in those press conferences all week, you saw a pissed off Matt Rule, upset players, just guys that truly cared about that, that loss in that fashion. So. Mm-hmm. To see them respond that way, I think that is probably the most encouraging sign for this team where it's headed. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're saying something about this, that they're starting to truly believe in what they're being taught and what's mm-hmm. being coached down there. You know, because I, I, I still remember times and we didn't lose much. When we lost, when we, our practice was full pass. They were heated, you know, because we felt that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. But I, I love that he went out that next day and said, no, we're in full pass. We're not going to just go happen. We're in full pass. We're going to get after it. I want to talk about Heinrich as well. So he's 12 for 14, 154 yards, no touchdowns, but one interception, and then 82 yards on the ground with a touchdown. What do you think of him? He, he played well. You know, he did what they asked him to do, and then he didn't make the what was outside of the one one mistake. I mean, he he played he managed the game well enough for Nebraska to win it. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, they had a fumble late in the game, but then there were some things that Illinois did in the second half that, that kind of slowed Nebraska down offensively. But uh, he managed the game to where they were able to win the game. Right. And, and, that, and that's right. And games like that, you rather for your quarterback to manage the game to win it than to do anything to make mistakes and lose it. Well, I think it's the offense coordinator's responsibility to manage that game. And for him. You know, and, and yeah, that, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, that, that's where it's coming in. And lots of times we put a lot of pressure on the players when a lot of that, more of that pressure should be on the coaches. Right. See, what, what, they're, what they're, they're scheme because they got to know how to work these guys for based on their size and their strength and whatever and what they got right now, what they could do, whether we're going to drop back or we're going to roll out. Mm-hmm. It's going to make a difference in them calling the plays because they have to give these players an advantage uh, from up top. You know, the offensive coordinator has right. to see what's happening and to make it easier for them because there's some things they're just not going to be able to do. Yeah, there was a moment in the game where Coach Rule called that timeout, maybe looked like he didn't like the play call from Satterfield. Does that worry you with play calling, or no. is it just something that happens? No, it happens. It, trust me, it happens more often than you think it does to where a play is called and when a head coach doesn't like it. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, see, you can see it every Sunday. You can see it every every, Saturday, every game. So you, the head, if a play is called, the head coach is going, no, don't, don't call that play. It's not good for right now. So mm-hmm. we're in a good rhythm. Let's stick with what we're doing. You know, so – that's why he's the head coach, and you want right. him to be able to override some of those, those calls, that, which means he's paying attention to what's happening in the game. That is a good sign. Also want to talk about um, Heinrich and just the way that he ran the football. 
Tommy, did you especially enjoy? I feel like he just runs with such force, and he's stiff arming guys out there. Like he doesn't care. Yeah, I, I like I like how he's being physical, but there's 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 sometimes I think he's trying to do too much in the run game. You sure. Know, there were several times on, on the option plays if he just pissed the ball. You know, it, I think it, he did once. It, and, and, and it, it turned out to be a good game. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but there's several other times he would pitch it. it been, I mean, Anthony Grant could probably could have bumped his head on the pylon because that's how, that's how wide open it was. Mm -hmm. but I get that they don't practice the options enough because it's one of those plays that you truly have to practice and get used to. But I just think the, but, but by him being, being more physical about the just not afraid to run, mm -hmm. you know, because if you look at the quarterbacks that we had in the past a couple of years, you can tell they was kind of afraid to run because they were afraid to get hurt. Yeah. Well, he's he, he feels like I have the weight, I have the, the body structure to where I can take the, take the beating. Yeah, 6'5", 215 pounds is not a light quarterback by any means. Um, I also just want to stay on that point for a second. In games that, Tommy, you felt like you were running the ball a ton. I mean, Johnny, you can speak to this too, but did you really feel feel that wear and tear on your body? Because that's something that Rule brought up of saying, like, hey, Heinrich, you got to understand that every single run matters, right, and you are – Damaging your body a little bit faster. Yeah, you, you feel it, but it also goes back to it's how you train your body. And it goes in, you train your body in the offseason, knowing that mm, Coach Osborne, the quarterbacks were just like running. We had to be like, like running backs too, so we had to train our bodies mm -hmm. to be able to take the pounding, knowing that we weren't going to carry the ball 20 times a game. But if there are games where we had to, we could. You know, but it's more so it's, it's, it's up here. It's all mental. Can I handle it? Can I take this punishment? And if you think you can take the punishment, you will take the punishment. If you think you can't, and that's when you start seeing your, your body slowing down. Well, I think his strong point is running. So he has to do what he does best. Mm -hmm. you know, his strong point is def definitely not passing. <laughs> so he, if he's going to be of value to us, he has to be able to tuck it up and, and, and run with it. And he has the confidence mm -hmm. to do that. I think he has far more confidence in running than he has in passing. Yeah, so the 39-yard grab uh, in this past game was the second longest catch of the season, the first being Marcus Washington's 56-yard. He had that 39-yard one. He had both then, of them. He had both, he of, had them, both right? of them, right? So I think that was also encouraging seeing chunk plays because we really hadn't seen too many of those. So there was a 39-yard pass to Washington and then two 21-yard passes to Fedoni and Ty Han. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of seeing him get a little bit more comfortable in the system and I think, Tommy, I was talking to you this, just this last show, and I was like, would you be shocked if there was a 35-yard throw? And then, of course, we see it. Yeah, we see it. And I think, I think um, they're, they're, they're picking spots, because you know, no one thinking – you very rarely see teams backed up on their one, two-yard line throwing a deep ball. Right. You know, because you know, now you're trying to play down this, you're trying to play field, but hey, we got to get some yards to punt the ball. So I thought that, that play caught them off guard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for Doney, he's a tight end. And tight ends are open and can make more big plays in, 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 in passing games than people think they can because a lot of teams don't really scheme their coverages around them. And so that's why when you have a great tight end that can, that can, that can run routes, that opens up everything else in your offense. Well, you, show, you throw the short passes, but you, you get big gains. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's not where you, how far you throw it. It's how far you take it after you, you've touched the ball, after you've caught the ball. That really makes a difference. And so now we have to just, like I said, it comes down to really the coaches so they can see what they're playing, if it's the man-on-man mm -hmm. man or, or what the zone is. And, so, and we have practiced. We watch the film, and we know what we can do, and we got to just implement that and do that. Mm -hmm. But we're not, we're not throwing the bombs, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get an 80-yard touchdown, but you could have had a 10-yard out right, and turn into an 80-yard touchdown. Right. Yeah, yards after, after catch. Uh, one thing else I wanted to touch on offensively, red zone efficiency was just three for six. What needs to be addressed there? Well, we'll take the turnover away. We yeah. fumble down the late. And I just think, they, they think it's one of those deals where offensively we've got to focus more. Once we get in the red zone, we got to put points on the board. We can't go 50% and think we're going to win a lot of football games, especially because defense is not going to play right. that well every game. But when, but when you're in the red zone, you got to put points on the board. And I know that that's one thing that Coach Osborne and I'm pretty sure Coach Devaney always preach. When we get in the red zone, we're not leaving without points. Mm -mm. And so, But when you, you don't score 50% of the time, that means there's something going on down there that they're not comfortable with. There's some play calling that's going to not comfortable with. And so they got to just figure it out. And, and sometimes maybe put, put together a red zone offense package. We're going to score some, some. We're not coming out there without some, and the field goal is is a disappointment. Mm -hmm. But we're coming out with some. We 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 really got the score, but and it's a disappointment to get the three. But you can never come away with nothing. Right. 
I uh, also want to talk about Anthony Grant. He kind of got called out by Coach Rule in the press conference, and Rule said, hey, I'm not okay with Anthony Grant right now. He has to fix the fumbling issue. And he also talked about the way Anthony holds the ball. He doesn't cover the tip of the football. It's just how he's been running it mm-hmm. for his entire mm-hmm. life. Johnny, maybe can you speak to that on how you should hold a football, number one, but why that may be happening? Well, they're saying that you should hold it with the point. Going mm-hmm. there, so it's, it's, it's easier to, to hold it when you got the point in your fingers, and it's easier to, to, to make sure you don't fumble. Uh, I have never really could pay that any attention because there's so many things really going on. But when you have that much contact going on, you do have to be thinking about the ball all the time. Right. Because you can't be in your mindset that you you could fumble if you don't have that point in the ball because then you're going to be thinking about getting the point on the right. ball. But when you got it in your hand and you got it, you got to make sure you got it to you and you're not going to drop the ball no matter what. Right, and for me, I think it's more of a lack of concentration, lack of focus. You know, when you're running the football, running backs are always the minimal focus. I don't care what happens. I got to protect this football because I'm going to get hit. And I think there's sometimes – And I think, some, I think there's sometimes when, he, when he's running the ball, he's, he's lack, lackluster. He's like a days ago when it comes to ball protection. I think what's going to happen now by Coach Rule challenging him, I think it's going to make him focus on him more because who do you have behind him? Fleeks, yeah. Yeah, uh, Fleeks. You have a you have a guy who's a wide receiver, come right. back up court, back up running back now. So you so you got to put a fire into him because he's the only experienced running back that they have, and he's a he's a, a damn good running back. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a top running back coming out of, out of high school. I mean, last year he, he started the season off, he was on pace for a thousand yards, and then they got away from running running him. So he's a, he's a, a great running back. He could be a great running back. He just got once again focus on the ball security. There was, there was another interesting quote in the press conference, too, that Matt Rule said, hey, if uh, Chubba was healthy when Sims got hurt initially, Chubba might have been thrown into there right. mm-hmm. before Heinrich. And I thought that was interesting that he said that. I don't know if this is maybe something to say, hey, Heinrich, you're not safe, right? It's a competition every single week, day in and day out. He also said, hey, we can win with all three quarterbacks. How do you take that in the QB room? As, as, as we can win all three quarterbacks. You know, one guy might start, but if one goes, the guy goes down, we, the other two guys can go in there and help us win the football game. But mm-hmm. To me, that's a positive. That's not a negative. That's a okay. positive. Because now you know if you're the starter, now you got to make sure you're in your A game week in and week out. You know, so having three quarterbacks that you feel you can win with and at this, at this time and this day and age in, in college sports, even pro sports, that's a plus. No, we had three, too. Jerry Taggy and, and Ben Bronson uh, were battling all the time. We had Steve Runny that mm-hmm. backed both of those up. Uh, but you have to have the type of quarterback where you don't lose ground just because you got another quarterback. Now, different quarterbacks can do different things better, you know. Uh, we have some that can pass better, some can run better, you know, some are, are thinking better, you know. But, it, it, but you can't lose ground just because you got a different quarterback in there. And your team has to be confident about that. Right. If they, that they don't think that you, no, mom, not him again. Yeah. You know, we got to go when he comes in, he just runs it for first team. just like everybody runs with the first team and they run it just like they're there all the time. And my whole problem is why is, it, why is it such a problem to have competition at quarterback when you have competition to every other position? You have a one and two, and, you know, those guys are battling weekend. So I think it's a, let, let them have compete every week. Mm-hmm. I want to bring something up later in the show about competition at quarterback, too, but we'll keep moving along with a few more things. Um, Sims is 100% healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, we also found that out in the press conferences. Uh, also, it was kind of alluded to that Heiner could be the starting quarterback, but would you like to see – both in there at some point, or do you just stick with Heinrich until you see a mistake? I, I would like to see both. I think Heinrich should start. I think he's earned the right to start. And I think you get, you know, I think if you can get Sims in the game early, all in the game, so he can get the flow of the game, get the feel of the game, and then go back to Heinrich, and then something happens, at least Sims not coming cold off the bench. Mm-hmm. I think he, I think Sims probably earned the right to see some playing time early. But I just think right now Heinrich is the guy who, who probably the team has more conf- confidence right now because he, he's won three games. Right. Sims might not get in. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how well the game goes. You know, you got, you got, you got to just keep the quarterback in. The, pe- the guy who's running the team, if things are going well, we just got to roll with that. Now, if it gets out of hand and we're doing well, we'll let somebody else play with it. Right now, mm-hmm. we got to let the guys know this is the guy here who's running things. Yeah, I'd be pretty surprised if we saw Sims on that first drive. Oh no no no, yeah. no 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 no! I don't think he would come out. If you if you, t- if you tell me that if you tell me that hey out of the first drive of the second quarter if we'll, we'll, we'll do if we're ahead and he comes in the first drive of the second quarter then maybe but then for the start of the game no. 
Yeah, if we're ahead and we want to stay ahead, we better, we better not change things. We better keep it going until we really get this down here. Because like you said, we've got so many different guys that are just learning, that are just coming around. They're just learning the system that mm -hmm. haven't really played that much. You right. know? Any little change might make them nervous. You really don't know. They're not, they're not confident as a unit. You know, and it's really, you have guys that are confident, but not as a unit yet right now. And I think, and I think it also is how they manage that message in the meetings. You know, that, that's a big part of you right. is how you're managing the message. And if you're managing the message the right way, then those guys understand what's going on. And us outside might not understand what's going on, but if you message it right in those meeting rooms and the practice, then they understand. I think we have a question from the crowd that we wanted to bring in super quick, and it's a bye week, so I say we let it happen. Let's buy it. Yeah, he's always about to, he's about to fall out of his chair over there like a, like a toddler. <laughs> he's, he's really excited. Let's give him that mic. All right. So both of you guys in the past have said the, the starter should not lose their starting position exactly. because of injury. Right, right. What changes now? If Sims is 100%, why don't we just throw him back in there if he's rules guy? What's the mindset behind that now? But, but because you also got to take the pulse of the team. And, 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 and Heinrich is, is, is playing very well. He hadn't done anything to put the team in jeopardy of not winning a lot of the football games. And I just, so I think by taking the pulse of the team, you know, I think that the the, the, the right decision right now is to stay with Heinrich. And, and, and I'm not, not saying that Jeff can't play, that he, that he can't play, but, but, but just me watching, I think this team is playing a little bit better with Heinrich as a starter right now. Now, that could change next week. Who knows? But for, for this week coming up, Heinrich, I think he's, he's earned the right to start by what he's done the past, by his, his body of work over the last four weeks. I thought about that question earlier today myself, that that might come up. Because we had emphasized yeah. that you do not lose your, your position mm -hmm. based on injury, you come back. And I think the only thing that's different, and I'm speaking from, a, from a, the mindset of a winning team, a team that's right. really solid together. And so you can come back and, like I said, you don't miss a beat one way or another, so you come back and get it. We're not there yet. We're just mm -hmm. not there yet where we can just – bring people in when we want to because of, uh, you know, because it's deserve it. We got to think of the whole thing right. here because anything might upset the whole thing right now. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and rule hasn't been there long enough to make that type of, of a decision that you got, you don't lose your position based on the demanding and Osborne. They were there a while when all these things uh, came up. And, so. it, and it also based off how well is he practicing? You know, you can be 100% healthy, but you still might be making mistakes in practice too, as well. So, so, well, so I don't know how he's practicing. You don't know how he's practicing. So, only the coaches know that. And, and I just feel that you, my rule has always been: you don't lose your job versus injury. But you also got to be performing at a high level when you come back. And I'll, maybe he's still making some of the same mistakes he was making before the injury. Thanks, Ethan. We appreciate that question. I'm glad we finally got you on, on the air. <laughs> we finally did. Yeah, I did Mid think show, about I was that. Like, <laughs> he's itching it back there. Yeah. He, needs, he needs to ask this. Uh, also, something cool about this game, there's a lot of homegrown guys stepping up for this team. Uh, the, uh, Heinrich himself, Ty Hahn, the Bullock brothers. Do you think that in-state recruiting, or how much do you think in-state recruiting can affect Nebraska moving forward? Well, the, the number one rule in all states if you're the East State University, you got to keep the best talent home. You can't let someone come in your backyard and take the best talent. And if you look at the history of the last 15 years, 20 years, how many of the top players in Nebraska got away and then came back and kicked Nebraska's butt? Yeah. So if you can keep the homegrown talent, that's a start there because cause, cause you know those guys now understand the passion and love for what Nebraska, the history of Nebraska is. You know, but, but you let those guys get away like we've done in the past and look how many of those guys are going and have great NFL careers. Or having great, you know, to me, that was a downfall. Right. And so by them focusing on making sure that we keep the best players in the state of Nebraska, whether it's a walk-on or a gray shirt or whatever, or scholarship, that's a win for Nebraska. Well, we want the best players from Nebraska definitely to play. But we want the best players, period, no matter where they're coming from, to be in there playing. Uh, we, we, we don't have, there's no nepotism uh, because you're from Nebraska. We want them to stand out. But, but we have to be pulling players from every single place around the globe that we really can to get them in there. And the team has to know that he's playing because he's best, not because he's from Nebraska, mm -hmm. but he's best, because right. he's best for us right now on the field. Yeah, and it was definitely a lot of guys stepping up that – 
you know, there's wide receivers that are out, right? And it could be a Malachi Coleman and a Jalen Lloyd who are both from Nebraska mm -hmm. and getting in those positions. So I think it is fun to see those guys that maybe not like – walked on but just kind of committed with the love for Nebraska right. getting to get in those big game positions because they're they're honestly going to need him again Marcus Washington tore his ACL out for the year so that yeah. wide receiver room man it's is slowly depleting I mean is so yeah and, and, and also when you see those guys playing like the, the Coleman's and the, the Bullets it also helps the high school coaches get on your team because mm -hmm. you know, for a while there was a lot of time Nebraska coaches going to those schools and the coaches won't even spend much time with them because they say, why are we going to send our kids there? You really don't want our kids there. But now you show them, hey, your kids get down and they're going to have an opportunity to play. Now let's see how if they can do it or not. And, they, and by them stepping up, now it's going to even open up the door for the, the high school coaches in Nebraska to try to help keep their kids here because yeah. they want to see those, their, their kids stay in the state and play. They don't want to stay now. They, they, they don't mind if they go away, but if they can watch them play and, and help their home state oh, yeah. be successful, that's what, they, that's what they want to do. I mean, Matt rolls out right now at the Creighton Prep game too, so – I bet, they're, they're I, bet he, I bet he's freezing. I'm sure. I, we saw a picture. He was in a hoodie, so I'm sure I'm, maybe he's gone by now. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was you at the, the Miller West Lincoln Southwest <laughs> game before I got here, and then trust me, that wind was blowing and started <laughs> missing, and it got chilly. And I'm like, yeah, I got I to send my truck and thought for a house before I walk in here. Something other kind of random I want to bring up from the game was the false starts, and Rule addressed after the game that Illinois was yelling move and stem at the line. Mm -hmm. What did you take from that, and is there any excuse for those false starts? No. No, simply because they don't use a cadence anymore anyway. It's all clapping, and the guy touches the center, and he snaps the ball. It's, to, me, it's, to me, I think that's just an excuse of making, of making a reason why they're making false starts. It's all, to me, pre-snap penalties is all mental. It has nothing to do. You're not focusing on what they're saying. You, are, you know your cadence. You know what you're supposed to do. You know what's going to happen. So why even worry about what they're saying? Mm -hmm. So I just think, though, to me, that that's probably when, when, since he's been one of the shining moments that, that I didn't like what he said because now you're trying to make an excuse for false stars. No, it's all mental to me. Yeah. Uh, it's back to the booty syndrome. <laughs> 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 the booty get good. tight. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Know, it's your butt, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your okay. butt. Hey, in the butt, Bob. Before we get to our last fun segment, I have an idea. Let's talk more about recruiting. Wow, he brought out the newlywed game back in the 70s. I don't even want to hear about that. Yeah, we, hey, anything we, else? We, we'll let that one go. Okay. That one. We're letting that one go. Talking about recruiting and how there's room for more than one position, especially from the state, and why is it a bad thing that there's a QB battle? Well, Nebraska does have the best quarterback in the state, given his rank, uh, Danny Kalen. Mm -hmm. And then there's also Anthony Rezac out of, West Side, <clears throat> out of West Side. Do you find it odd that Nebraska hasn't offered Anthony? And should there be an offer for both top in-state quarterbacks? You know, it's one of those deals you, you look at your room. You look at your room on, on levels and years of the guys you have here. And and I think from what I understand, I think Chubb is a sophomore. I think Heinrich is a red shirt sophomore, a red shirt freshman. I think Jill, I think Jeff might have two or three more years. And then so now if you're throwing two more freshmen in there, there's a good chance you're gonna lose a couple of those guys anyway. So so you, what yeah. you want to try to do is make sure that you you always bring in a top quarterback every year. I don't care what you you always have to do that. And then if you can steal another one, fine. But usually if you offer one, you're not gonna get the other one. Right, and that was what was interesting to me. I think they had offered him as an athlete, but not as a quarterback specifically yet. Right. So, and he's visited, I mean, Notre Dame unofficially too. So it's it's interesting to see because, I mean, Johnny, back to your point about getting the best talent in the state, it's it would suck just to see him move on and go somewhere else. And you know, yeah, but we've kid, seen it in the past. Yeah, but, but the, like but the kid from West Side is already committed, from what I understand, correct? I don't think so. I thought, I thought he did. He did with the two receivers. I thought because I thought it was like three guys were coming. So here. that was that's Bell West. So no, it's, that's what I mean, Bell West. I, yes, I those all guys, three guys are yeah, committed the to Nebraska. The quarterback and two wide receivers. Correct. Yeah, so, yep. that, so maybe he sees that like, wait a minute, maybe I, I played. Easy, but I still have to take my other trips. Sure. And maybe something might happen later in the year. But, but it's, it's going to be ready to get both top quarterbacks mm -hmm. in the state the same year. Yeah, so Heinrich's a sophomore. Chubb is a sophomore. Sims is a junior. Right. Um, so, yeah, I guess technically he would have two years left from, from that count at least. Right, you, right. Never, you never know with all the, the COVID years and the red shirts. But potentially two years there. But um, do you see an issue with that, Johnny, of – 
having two in-state quarterbacks in the same recruiting class? I'd be, we'd be lucky to get one of them. They got yeah, one of them, yeah. at least. He's, he's committed. Well, we don't he, have him yet. Yeah, okay. He hasn't put the pen to paper. Uh, yeah. No uh, pen you, to paper yet. If Notre Dame or other people were recruiting some of these same guys, we need to be on them. Yeah. But it's, it, it's hard for us to get them. Right. It's not guaranteed that we're really going to get them. Right. We need to try. We have a reputation for not getting the best talent in the state from the state. Mm-hmm. But we need to be focusing on them all the time. Yeah. All the time. But it's, it's difficult to bring two top quarterbacks from the state somewhere a place where you're not doing well already and they have an opportunity to go someplace else right. that might be doing better or right. might have a reputation or a better reputation. But we need to be focusing on everybody all the time because we can't afford to overlook any type of talent whatsoever. And I know that I guarantee that they're not not still recruiting him because mm-hmm. they understand things, things can change overnight when it comes to do young, young, young kids and course, especially quarterback play because now with this NIL stuff and then, you know, you can, with another school coming off for one kid this amount of money, he changes his commitment. So, yep. so they, they're going to continue recruiting him as they want him here and then it's up for the kid to decide if he right. wants to be here and Kalen did flip his recruitment from Mizzou to Exa- Nebraska exactly. right so like yes. anything, can, anything happen can happen and, until they put the pen to paper exactly. of course and you still don't really have a match for that right. either they can always transfer in the portal in the portal <laughs> Johnny loves the portal oh yeah. yeah oh yeah well I think we need to get there now to get what we need that's 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 like a gift yeah to be able to go in there and get you somebody that you need now to fill your gaps uh, before we dive into this last game, going into this bye week, and when I say game, I mean the game we're about to play. Mm-hmm. Going into the bye week, what does Nebraska need to focus on most? Getting healthy. You know, getting healthy and, and, and solidifying some of the spots where they weren't sure about. You know, so that's what most teams use their bye week for, getting younger guys more reps, getting guys healthy, and then solidifying the, the things they do well, doing those better. And uh, hopefully that's what you're going to see offensively. I think defense know what they can do. They know what they were good at. And now they just need to improve on that. But offense need to really, for me, hope they took this by to figure out what do they do best and get great at that. Well, we, we, we can't get – our injuries, we got too many injuries. We got people that we got challenges really, really coming here. We have guys who had to build up the confidence in the guys where rather than see that this is a catastrophe, that this is an opportunity. This is my opportunity to get in the game. It's my opportunity to make a contribution. This is my – I've been telling y'all how good I am. So now I get to show you how good I am. Mm-hmm. And collectively, these guys are filling these positions because we can't get healthy. Yeah, we can get new people in, right. and they gonna be healthy, but but they can't. They got to come in with the right attitude to be healthy because a bad attitude is gonna make us worse off than we are. And like I said, the whole confidence thing. I don't know about how the young players are being uh, treated and, and and brought along or whatever, but it has to be from a, a level of a positiveness that we're counting on you. And are you ready? Mm-hmm. Are you ready? And and, and, I, and I think that's what Coach Rule and from things that I've had had heard people say. And he's telling them, hey, young guys, you better be ready because if hey, this guy's not here, that we didn't recruit this guy. But if he's not getting none, we're going to put the guys in there that we we rather lose with younger guys, getting them experience, and lose with old guys doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what was happening over the years here at Nebraska where the same guy that were making the same mistake was still the guy on the field. Right. And Matt Rule even talked about it. I remember this video that mm-hmm. came out during the fall camp of him literally bringing all of the guys together with Trev Alberts and saying, hey, a lot of these players and, and former coaches didn't get a play their freshman year or their sophomore year. You have to earn that opportunity. When you get it, don't let go. Right. So I think that message has to be reiterated over this bye week. And, again, just stay healthy I think is the biggest thing uh, – uh, one and zero this week is no more injuries. Honestly, throughout practice, everything you're doing, I think that's one and zero this know, bye you week. Know, to me, injuries happen as part of the game. You know, like Marcus Washington, his injury. When you look at it, it, it didn't look like it was anything serious, major. Mm-hmm. Maybe, he, but he probably just stepped the wrong way. So injuries are part of the game, but it's next man up. You can't you can't worry about injuries because that's going to happen in the game. Next man up, you got to step up and, and make sure there's not a drop off. That's why the rosters are so big. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to play one game before we let you guys go. Oh, geez. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No Gen Z slang. We already did that one. Okay. Um, but this one might be more fun. And you guys can absolutely chime in, too, because they might need some help. So we're going to try to name every starting quarterback on oh. opening day of the season uh, since Tommy Frazier. So starting in 1996, this one's easy. Go ahead. Scott. Scott Frost. Correct. 97, Scott. Yep. 98, 
Um, Bobby Newcomb. Correct. 99. Eric. Correct. Eric. Yep. Eric. Mm hmm. Jamal Lord. That's correct. Oh, and this one I must stomp right here. So he was also 2003. 2003. So 2004. Sam Keller. Not yet. You're missing two in between that. Joe Gans. Not Joe Gans yet. 2004. Is that Taylor? His name. Okay, so that's 2005. You're missing 2004. His name does start with Joe. Oh, Joe, Joe, Joe Daly. Joe Daly, yep. Mm-hmm. And then Sam Keller, 2007. Zach Taylor, and then Zach Taylor. We'll no. Nope. Uh, Joe Gans Joe was 2008. Gans. And then. Zach. Zach Lee, correct. Go Bengals. You're a Bengals fan. Oh, Zach Taylor, not Zach Lee. <laughs> Zach oh, excuse me, Zach Taylor. Mm-hmm. Well, no, Zach Taylor was 2005, and then Zach, Zach Lee, Lee. was 2006, 2007. Yes, Zach Taylor, the. Yep, same thing, guys. Uh, Zach Lee, 2009, and then 2010. We should know this one. Adrian. Other Martinez. Yeah, Adrian Martinez. Taylor Martinez. Taylor Martinez. Taylor Martinez. <laughs> it gets everyone. Taylor ES- Martinez. Even ESPN. Uh, after Taylor, so he started four years. Then, um, ooh, do, 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 do. It wasn't very good, whoever it was. It was, it, was a good, it was a good quarterback. Was it? Tommy Armstrong. Oh, yeah, the other Tommy. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> that right. other Tommy. The other Tommy. The other Tommy. <laughs> okay. 2017, this is the lesser known. Adrian. Uh, no, before, even before Adrian, 2017. 2017? Mm-hmm. You're keeping up. You're a lot better than I am. Johnny hasn't said a word no, this whole time. Uh-huh. He's like, I don't know. Who I'm not focused on quarterbacks here. Before Adrian. You guys have a, you guys know over there? Because it was just one year, wasn't it? Just one year before Adrian came in. Give, give, me, a hint. give me a hint. Give me a clue. Uh, his first name starts with a T. Last name L. Lee something. No. Tanner Lee. Tanner Lee. Tanner Lee. There you go, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah that, no, of course you didn't know him. Now, how, how, many of those, how, many, how many of those quarterbacks were drafted in the NFL? Zero. Zero. That's why I don't remember. Um, let's see. <laughs> None I think there was one that actually ended up being zero. Tommy wasn't. No. Mm. That's tough. Okay, so then Adrian Martinez in 2018, and then 19 and 20. Yep, and then Casey Thompson in 22, and then of course Jeff Sims in 23. But since uh, Tommy Armstrong, there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve quarterbacks. Different ones. Different mm. quarterbacks playing, starting a game. Pretty crazy. What shows you that back? What shows that the quarterback talent just hadn't been there? Mm-hmm. You know, you usually get a guy. You use the quarterbacks when you come there. If they start early, they're gonna be there. Right. Or you have one guy starts two years, and another guy starts two or three years. So it just shows you that every time you change the coach, they gonna bring in their own guy. Well, it tells me that we're we're not recruiting that well. You know, because they're out there. They, they're some, out some, there. They're out there. Somebody's getting them, and we're not doing our research on them. Mm-hmm. And what we want to do, maybe we don't know what we want to do. Right. What type of quarterback we really want to have, you know, because they're out there. It's predicated upon what you need them for and where, where they're going to play. How are we going to get them? And we have, they have to see that coming here to the University of Nebraska is an opportunity. Opportunity. If none of these guys got an NFL, why would they come here? I don't know. Because they want to go to the NFL. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that, that's, yeah. the, that's the number they one goal. They want to know that where, where are scouts going to get quarterbacks. Right. That's where I'm going. Because mm-hmm. so that's who's making yeah. all the money. That's who's <laughs> making all the money. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's just the glaring difference. And I the linemen. The linemen is the same, the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, same or, thing. Or, or, they ain't got big time linemen let's coming here. How many of those quarterbacks were all conference players? Adrian, maybe? Martinez? All conference. And that, that's even right there. If you can't be in all conference, it's three teams. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you can't make one of those, and mm-hmm. you're not going to win very many games. I'm, I'm not the only one who don't know about them. <laughs> yeah, so the other guys that started games for Nebraska, Ron Kellogg the third, Riker Fife, mm-hmm. Noah Vedrill, Andrew Bunce, Luke, Bunch, Luke McCaffrey, Chubba Purdy, Logan Smothers, and then Sims, uh, Harburg, and then – Casey Thompson was the other one yeah, besides I saw, Martinez. So. I saw Logan Smothers play last night. Was it last night? I think so, yeah. He, he was doing pretty well he from what I heard. Well, yeah. Jacksonville State, so. And then Casey Thompson, another season-ending yep. injury. That's yep. just so tough for him. He's had the worst luck ever. Some quarterbacks just, just, mm. it just it happens. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, it's part of the game. 
I remember Jerry Jaggy. He was our quarterback. He went to uh, Green Bay, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'd have to look up when's the last quarterback that got drafted from Nebraska. Who would that be? Eric. Yeah. Eric got drafted. Third round, I believe it was, wasn't it? Third? No. Yeah. Eric got drafted for sure. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to ask Eric when he comes on. Or I can just Google it, right? I'm pretty sure he, got, he was drafted like third round to the Rams, was it? They wanted him to play wide receiver. They wanted to play wide receiver then, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah that's why. That's yeah, why was third the pick in 2002. 95th overall. Let's see where he went. As a wide receiver, though. Rams. Yep, Rams. Good old St. Louis Rams. Yep. Well, guys, any final thoughts before we speak again on Thursday and preview that? Oh, we're not doing Monday again? You're going to be hungover Yeah, sorry. Again, I got to huh? go out of town again. <laughs> no, we're not. What, what else would we talk about? <laughs> Actually, you know what? We can have Monday's episode just be Johnny talking. Yeah, Johnny, oh, right. Johnny Slogan. <laughs> we'll just let him loose. <laughs> let, let him go. I wanted to do a segment where it's like, did Johnny Rogers say this or did Shakespeare say this? <laughs> <laughs> but we know them too well. Yeah. Like, we know all the lines too well, so we would all know. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a better version would be: Did Johnny Rogers say this, or did Drake say this? Yes, kind of thing. Okay. Well, see now she's bringing in the Gen Z. She yeah. bring somebody that she knew, not. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I if I could name a rapper you guys would like very well. So you know who? Ron DMC. You know, you know, let's go back. Come on now, those, that's, that's, that's good music back then. This crap they got now, it all sounds the same to me. Well, we we all into love music. Well, back you're in the R and B, yeah, R and B, slow R and B, soul music. Soul music. You guys yeah. had it good back in the day with yeah. your R and B. We, we don't have good. it as we got no. just Bryce and Tiller now. That's about it. Who, who's that? You don't need to know Bryce and okay. Tiller, but <laughs> great artist though. I don't, I don't know if you'd vibe with him, Tommy. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the run. Tommy Fraser, Johnny Rogers, Anna Bellinghausen. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Ass kickers, booty whoopers. Woo! Go big red. <laughs>